My lecture today is on the subject of overexfoliation. And as a postgraduate educator, I have observed that the modalities for desquamation are being used and overused, and there is what I call a let's peel it mindset that too many skin treatment technicians have. In fact, I believe we are observing an epidemic of overexfoliation in both the medical aesthetics and skin treatment therapy industries. This began with the advent of glycolic peels in the early 90s and has steadily progressed on through to now with microderm abrasion machines, resurfacing lasers, enzymes and acids galore to choose from. I must say that at the time when glycolic was first released to our industry that we all thought that this treatment modality was going to be the cure-all for everything that involved the aging skin. How wrong we were. It is as if the industry has forgotten that one of the ethics of the skin treatment therapy profession is to preserve the integrity of the epidermis at all times. Have we also forgotten that the epidermis, a major line of skin barrier defense, contains many intricate systems that work in synergy with one another to protect the body? Each day the skin suffers multiple attacks, whether physical or mechanical, from undesirable microorganisms or the sun, it withstands these with a very sophisticated detection, protection and defense systems in the epidermis and the dermis. In addition to its protective function, the skin also has a metabolic and sensory function. So, why are we choosing modalities that compromise these skin barrier defense systems? Finally, this skin has to maintain integrity by repairing itself, and this is only possible if the keratinocyte is healthy and viable. The keratinocyte is a hydrophobic cell with a life cycle of around 10 to 15 days from mitosis to arriving in the stratum corneum as a corneocyte. It will then take another 3 to 5 days to desquamate. This timeline is age and lifestyle dependent. All other cells of the epidermis have varying life cycles, but we'll leave that subject for another day. It is the acid mantle, stratum corneum, and bilayers that are the first three lines of skin barrier defense. The epidermis as a whole also protects the underlying dermis and subcutaneous layers. Skin is your livelihood. Know it. Live it. Breathe it, understand it, and begin by knowing the life cycle of the keratinocyte and what it requires to function and create the skin barrier defense systems. Skin is covered by a film called the acid mantle. This is composed of a mixture of sweat, sebum, and the important epidermic lipids such as ceramides. These ceramides were formed by the keratinocyte during its journey through the epidermis. And the keratinocyte cell membrane contributed to these ceramides uh, and are linked to omega-3 and 6. These ceramides are the emulsifiers of the sebaceous and sudiferous secretions that make your acid mantle. Ceramides, we said, are ester-linked to omegas 3 and 6. We often refer to these as essential fatty acids or uh, unsaturated fats. And we often think of uh, things like fish oil or evening primrose, um, borage. All of those different types of oils are in the essential acid fatty acid families. Omegas are not metabolized and are only available through good nutrition. And we require, most importantly, omega-3 to achieve prostaglandin-3, which is responsible for cellular and reducing cellular inflammation. The acid mantle has a pH of around 5.5. Normal resident bacteria, skin flora, have evolved to live in this acidic environment and it has all of the properties required to prevent non-resident bacteria from developing. At the same time, it maintains a skin barrier and hydration of the lower layers.
I call this an ecosystem. And like all ecosystems, there is a delicate balance in the food chain and the environment. Maintaining the physiological pH of the skin is essential. And any excess of cleansing or unnecessary removal upsets the equilibrium of this flora, causing them to move or die. When this happens, more unpleasant, non-resident bacteria may proliferate. Question. Why would you knowingly destroy this ecosystem or compromise it with unnecessary desquamation? In addition to creating an environment for skin flora to reside, the acid mantle plays the important role of maintaining epidermal hydration by preventing and slowing down the evaporation of the free water of the epidermis. This is done by the oil phase of the acid mantle, ceramides of the bilayers, including the hydrophobic ability of the cornea site. Interstitial fluid from the dermis continually rises across into the epidermis via the dermal epidermal junction and eventually evaporates from the surface of the skin. This water movement is known as transepidermal water loss or T well. To maintain the major the, to maintain the water levels in the epidermis, all skin lipids must be at optimum levels. The simple law of physics says oil sits on top of water. And when we apply this to skin, it translates into epidermic lipids prevent evaporation and this results in better hydration levels. This is thinking like a chemist. We are learning that the skin has a very elaborate defense system where different types of cells work in synergy. Another important cell located in the epidermis are large cells with long branching extensions or dendrites that reach high up into the epidermis close to the stratum corneum. They are called Langerhang cells and are an important part of the innate and adaptive immune systems. Receiving information from the keratinocyte or by capturing a foreign object or substance by endocytosis, the Langerhang cell is like a macrophage and can leave the epidermis for the lymphatic system to contribute in building protective antigens, antiantigens, and cellular memory. Although Langerhang cells only make up around 2-4% to of epidermal cells, they represent more than 25% of the skin barrier defense systems of the epidermis. That is quite a considerable amount. Unfortunately, Langerhang cell numbers will decline with age. The dendrites will become shorter. The cell will become less permeable and flexible. And Langerhang cells can spontaneously leave the epidermis if it is repetitively sunburned or exposed to water burns or chemical burns. If the epidermis is continually compromised, the Langerhang cell will not return to that area. This means that you would be 25% skin barrier defense systems down. So why would you compromise the integrity of the skin by continually removing important lines of skin barrier defense? We can see if we have an unprotected skin, we get an increase in oxidative stress. From there, there is a decrease in cell protection, an increase in lipid peroxidation, and of course, eventual mitochondria DNA damage. All of this is going to uh, accelerate the cellular senescence of a cell. Therapists often complain that their clients strip the skin to the point where it is red, sensitized, and aggressed. So why, as professional therapists, are we doing the same to our client's skin? The removal of the acid mantle on a daily basis through harsh ultraline washes and uh, acidic gels or toners and, and alcohol will eventually lead to an imbalance of the microflora. And many of the skincare lines that our clients use on a daily basis are exacerbating this condition. What is a result, of course, is loss of the first line of skin barrier defense. We have a hot, burning, itchy skin. And this is easily prevented. 
continual removal of the epidermis without consideration for keratinocyte health and cellular age is having a negative knock-on effect to the viability of the entire epidermis and all of the related skin barrier defense systems. Continual use of professional peels and accompanying modalities of desquamation are not helping the situation. General exfoliation is not really my concern. It is the overuse of professional peels and accompanying modalities for desquamation in the belief that these modalities will be the answer to wrinkles, pigmentation and acne that really bothers me. It's the let's peel it mindset that really gives me the greatest concern. Instead of believing that acids can treat everything, consider what a cell requires to function or what is required to inhibit a function. For example, glycolic acid is not a tyrosinase inhibitor, so therefore will have no effect on the melanocyte and the skin condition pigmentation. Glycolic is a hydrophilic, hygroscopic, keratolytic acid, and all of those attributes are very suitable for the treatment of hyperkeratinization. But, as I said, will have no effect on the melanocyte in a positive way at all. Peel. Peel for the penetration of actives is the professional mindset. Descremation and related peeling modalities are excellent tools, but they are not the only answer. Skin conditions like pigmentation and aging make up a large part of our clients' concerns. The actors required to make changes to these skin conditions are often in the vitamin and the coenzyme families. The area of the epidermis and dermis to be affected by these actives is below the granular and dermal epidermal junction. To aid the penetration of the actives that may have an effect on cells of the epidermis is where modalities like peeling or desquamation modalities come into play. Not the answer, but at all. When treating the skin, we should consider the life cycle of the cell that you're influencing. You should understand and ask the question, what does the cell require to function efficiently? And then supply it. Before embarking on any skin treatment program, there is a preparation time. We should consider repairing supporting enzyme systems, uh, replace nutrients topically and nutritionally. We should ensure that all backup systems are well functioning, that a good antioxidant and repair skin treatment program is in place. Then, and only then, Maybe two weeks later, would you consider using modalities like acids or enzymes or other desquamating modalities? This is a wonderful time to be in the skin treatment industry because we have many actives and modalities that work. It's choosing the correct one that is the challenge. You've got actives of the new millennium, vitamins A, C and E that are now stabilized for use. Essential fatty acids, amino acids, peptides, alpha-lipaic, DMAE, ergothionine, just to name a few of the actives that are available to you. Consider what the cell requires and then make your choice. Consider the basic majority skin type, the risk factors, first priority skin condition, and how you're going to prep a skin. And then you're going to make a difference to this client's skin. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share experience with you. This webinar was created to make you think about what it is you're actually doing in your clinic that gives you a point of difference. If you are offering your customers no more than what she has experienced before, the chances are you're going to lose that client. Why should a client come to your clinic for skin treatment therapy or for a solution for a skin concern when all she's offered is a peel? I challenge you to think about the future of your industry, your business, and your credibility as a professional and start making the right choices. Thank you very much. Goodbye.